Okay, so I've had the M50 for a little bit and I got the speed booster and I did a mistake and it's embarrassing to admit, but when I got the speed adapter, I didn't look closely enough to see if it worked with all the different lenses I have. So it doesn't. So I had to get the other adapter, but luckily Viltrox had a less expensive one for like 46 bucks. So that wasn't too bad. But then I thought, oh man, I wonder what the real difference is. I can use the speed adapter and the regular adapter on a couple different lenses. One of them is a 50 millimeter. So I thought, wouldn't that be cool to go out and kind of test it and see kind of like, well, what's the difference? Is it really worth getting a speed booster? And so that's what I did. Okay, so I went out to the lake the other day. It was a, a little chilly, 24 degrees, not too bad, you know. And I got concerned because I was like, oh man, if I go out, what's the temperature rating for this? Can I bring it out in the cold? And so I looked it up and in fact you can. The only thing you have to worry about is battery life. And it, you know, the cold just sucks batteries like you wouldn't believe. And the other thing is when you bring your camera in from the outside, you're gonna get a bit of condensation. Kind of like when you're coming in from the inside with your glasses, if you wear glasses, you'll suddenly get things fogged up. Same thing happens with your lenses, only that's not really good to have moisture inside there. So that's the only thing to be concerned about is kind of having your camera in a bag of some sort so that you can kind of let it adjust for a while so you don't get that instant condensation. Um, so with that in mind, I went out to the lake and I got some footage and I tried as much as possible to kind of compare them. I did this thing uh, with jumping. Uh, when I go to the ocean, I love to do the jumping scene. And if you do it just right, you can get it to where you're up on a cliff and, and it looks like you're kind of jumping in, in the air, really far in the air, which is really cool. I couldn't really duplicate that here. This is just right, it's, this is just right, right near the lake. And so, but I went out there and I had some fun with this and we'll see what you think. Um, I, I identified which one was which obviously, and you can see the difference. I, of course the speed booster does better. I mean, it just, it does. It, it doesn't crop as much. It brings a lot more information and just, it has a kind of a crisper look to it. And uh, so I really like using the speed booster. I'm really sad that I can't use it with all the different lenses I have, but um, it was still kind of fun to do, but I missed um, my uh, 24 millimeter. This, I really love the 24 millimeter, the, the sounds of the uh, other two lenses that I brought out with me, which is a 50 millimeter and the 55 to 250. I didn't end up using the 55 to 250. It was kind of frustrating to go back and forth. And so I just stuck with the 50 millimeter. Um, it was just a lot easier to kind of test that than to do with the with the zoom. So, um, but you, but I got all kinds of noise. Whereas with this one, I really don't get the focus noise at all. It's very silent, very sweet. Um, fast um, focusing. So without further ado, I'm going to go through some different um, footage and you can check it out and see what you think. Now, next time I would bring my dog because dogs are a lot more interesting. <laughs> and a side note, I'm using the Logitech today. Why would I use the Logitech when I've got the Canon M50 to record from? Although you get the crisp look and everything, I'm thinking it's just better to use the Logitech. I'll tell you why in another video, but for now, let's go check out the zoom test. Okay, so this first is just a jump uh, with speed booster. I just jumped from a picnic table, six frames per second, kind of slow it down a little bit. I get that slow-mo. Now, at first I was disappointed because I'm like, well, it cuts it off on this other one. But I think that uh, cutoff actually shows exactly the limitations of the regular adapter. So it was it was as much in the same spot as I can make it while also trying to capture what's there. This is with the Viltrox adapter uh, speed boost and I was able to get a jump off of that. And uh, now I'm gonna do some different tests with uh, Reveal but uh, not turning too much in the lake because of course I'm right into the sun. Okay, so this is a regular reveal behind a tree. So it's, it's like you're revealing, you're starting at something close up and then revealing uh, further on. And of course, <laughs> there's a tree in the way, so it doesn't look that great. But the rest of it is, is pretty nice. And really, if you look between the two, and I'm coming the regular one right here, um, if you switch back between them, you'll see that this one, of course, is cropped in a bit. Um, that's the whole design behind uh, the speed adapter is to, you know, you get more of the full frame. Even so, I think it's a little less obvious with a scene like this than it is with the other one.
Okay, so that's about it. Um, what do you think of the test? Let me know in the comments if you thought this was helpful. Give it a like. And I don't know if you noticed, but I'm wearing my Funnel Hacking t-shirt. Thanks a lot for watching. See you next time. Thank you.